Containers are great because they're so small and lightweight. Why do I have 100 gigabytes of images in my Docker cache? Hey team, Sid here with DevOps Directive, where it's my job to help you level up your DevOps and cloud infrastructure skills. Today, I'm issuing a challenge to all of you, the global DevOps Directive team, to build the smallest possible container image. The rules of the challenge are pretty simple. The container should run a web server, accessible on a port of your choosing, and serve the contents of some file on the file system i.e. don't just hard code a hello world HTTP response. Let me know the smallest size that you're able to achieve in the comments section. I'll give the winner a shout out in a future video. To get a baseline, I created a simple server using Node.js. This uses some built-in modules to create a server that can read in an index.html file. I then built it into a container image using the official Node.js base image. It weighs in at a whopping 900 plus megabytes. That's not very good. Sure, but we can do better by using a smaller base image. Simply adding the slim tag, which is still based on Debian, but has fewer pre-installed dependencies, our resulting image shrinks to just 167 megabytes. Or we can even use the Alpine tag, which is an even smaller Linux distribution, to get us all the way down to 116 megabytes. This is about as small as we can go with Node.js because all the size is included in our base image. Docker containers are additive, so you can only add more layers to the image. To improve further, we're going to need to move to a language where we don't have to include so many runtime dependencies. For writing web services, one common choice is Golang. Golang can be compiled into a standalone executable, which should allow us to shrink down our image even further. Go was designed with web services in mind, so there's plenty of useful packages in the standard library. Writing a web server is as simple as importing the HTTP module, setting up a file server, a route handler, and then listening for our requests. The Docker file is also pretty straightforward. We copy our source code into the Golang base image, use Go build to compile it, and then run the server. This brings our image size to 818 megabytes. Wait, I thought you were gonna shrink the image. I did, but the issue here is that all of the build dependencies are included in that base image, making it much larger. The way we can fix this is by building our image in one container and then copying the executable into a separate container without all of those dependencies installed. The easiest way to do it is with multi-stage builds. The first stage looks similar to our previous Docker file, but we add a name to it and remove our command. The second stage, we can then use a much smaller base image and we copy our built executable from our build stage into the second stage. Finally, we copy in our index.html and run the server. This approach gets our image size down to 13.2 megabytes. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. But wait, there's more. The Alpine base image is almost six megabytes, which isn't too bad, but there's another image called Scratch. Scratch is an explicitly empty image, so it's perfect for trying to minimize image size. The trick is that with the scratch base image, there's no system libraries included. You have to statically link any dependencies into your compiled executable. With Go, we can do this by adding a few additional flags to the build step, including setting the link mode to external and passing the static flag to the external linker. This ensures that the compiled server file has all of the necessary dependencies included within it, and we can execute it from our scratch image without having any issues. Using this approach brings our container size to just 7.6 megabytes. All right, so are we done here? No way, I've got one more trick up my sleeve. As I was working on this project, I came across a web server written in assembly. If you're unfamiliar with assembly, it's a super low level language in which the instructions are basically a human readable version of the machine code that the processor will execute. You end up doing lots of direct manipulation of memory registers, even just writing a hello world program takes many lines and is unintelligible without extensive comments. How people are able to write non-trivial software in assembly is absolutely mind blowing to me. But luckily for us, GitHub user Nemesu has a fully functional web server written in assembly on GitHub open source. The Docker file for this one looks similar to our Golang multi-stage Docker file. I did need to install a few more build dependencies into the base image, including the Unix build tool make and NASM, netwide assembler. The project contained a handy make file 
that handles all the details of building the server. So all I had to do is run make release, which produces the static assembly TTTPD executable, and then copy it into the scratch container along with our index.html and set our command appropriately. To demonstrate that it works, I'll run docker run port forward 8080 from my local host into the container, and then the name of the container. I can then access it on localhost through the browser. The size of this image is 6.32 kilobytes. What, what is, is this, this? A, a container, container for ants? ants? Leave a like if you enjoyed this journey from my initial hefty Node.js image all the way to the super small assembly image. I hope you learned a few tricks you can use in your own attempts to build smaller container images. Make sure to leave a comment with your smallest attempt. I'd love to hear about any other tricks that you used along the way. If you want to learn more about Docker and containers, I suggest you continue down the DevOps rabbit hole by watching one of my other videos on the screen now. That's it for today, and remember, just keep building. Mm -hmm.